Coming up tonight on YCN News. New Hampshire Governor Maggie Hassan talks minimum wage and business loans in today's State of the State Address. Vermont State Police issue a public safety warning about a painkiller being sold as heroin. And a morning fire destroys a home office in Cavendish, Vermont. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, Southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening, and welcome to this Thursday edition of YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Raising the state's minimum wage and finding more banks willing to make business loans are two areas addressed today in New Hampshire Governor Maggie Hassan's State of the State speech. Moving forward with plans for a casino and connecting manufacturing companies with students to create a skilled job pipeline are two other goals Hassan set forth today. Hassan asked Republican and Democratic lawmakers to work together to make these plans happen. In her speech, delivered to the legislature this afternoon in Concord, Hassan thanked all residents whose volunteer spirit has helped fellow citizens get through the Great Recession, calling it an all-hands-on-deck mode. Hassan thanked residents throughout the state for their can-do attitude. Citing poet and New Hampshire resident Robert Frost, Hassan summed up the way residents and companies have risen to economic challenges. The best way out is always through, Hassan quoted Frost. Rolling up his shirt sleeves in this effort has been Hassan's husband, Tom. One of the first husbands to pitch in and help assignments took him to the Claremont Soup Kitchen. Around the state, Hassan continued, the state's economic outlook is improving. More remains to be done, she said, including the minimum wage issue, which is currently $7.25 per hour. With a nod to Governor Hassan's remarks today, Prospects for a casino in New Hampshire's southern tier are looking brighter. Also in today's address, Hassan let lawmakers in at least two New England states know that if proceeds from a casino could benefit a governance cash flow, it will be New Hampshire that gets this gain. Instead of funding Massachusetts' needs, let's take the opportunity to invest in New Hampshire, the governor said. With action taken on a casino bill Tuesday in Concord by more than 100 Democratic and Republican state reps, Hassan's directive continues to move forward. The bill will be reviewed this week before the House Ways and Means Committee, the Concord Monitor reports. One reason why more lawmakers from both sides of the aisle may be more supportive of a casino is that plans are underway to regulate gaming activity. Democratic Representative and Jaffrey resident Richard Ames is leading a panel that will audit all financial proceeds. Further, Noting public safety concerns around a casino siting, a special division of the state police would also oversee gaming activity. The bill is House Bill 1633. It would need more support in the House to be passed before the governor could sign it into law. Ames told the monitor he knows more work is needed to gain additional support from the 400-member House of Representatives. In spring 2013, the House did not support a casino. Although a bill passed in the Senate, it failed in the House by 35 votes. The tally was 199 to 164 to kill the bill. When YCN News returns, we'll learn about the public safety warning issued by Vermont State Police and the morning fire that destroyed a home office in Cavendish, Vermont. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Turning to Vermont news, state police have issued a public safety warning. A painkiller called fentanyl is being sold as heroin. This drug, typically used intravenously in hospitals to relieve a patient's pain, is being sold on the street. It is being packaged as heroin, which leads to the danger. If injected by a person unfamiliar with its effects, a person could unknowingly overdose on fentanyl. Investigators are working leads into who is behind the source, packaging, and source of fentanyl being sold as heroin. When more information becomes available, state police will issue an update. With problems in Vermont of opiate addiction addressed in his State of the State address, 
Governor Peter Shumlin is scheduled to hold a press conference tomorrow on treatment programs for youth. Shumlin will speak on expanding an early intervention and treatment program for young adults at risk of alcohol and drug abuse. The Community Health Center in Burlington will be the site where Governor Shumlin will speak. Also in Vermont, a morning fire destroyed a home office. Cavendish Fire Chief Shane Turco says one alarm blaze gutted the home, located at 2055 Main Street. Turco said no one was in the home at the time. No one was injured, including any firefighters, he said. Fire crews arrived on the scene at 6.45 a.m. The fire was declared out by 11 a.m., Turco said. There is no estimate on the cost of damages, the chief added. Further north, Barrie police are investigating an armed robbery at a Rite Aid store on North Main Street, the Times Argus reports. Police say a man entered the store after 7 p.m. on Wednesday and told the clerk he wanted OxyContin. Although no weapon was shown during the holdup, police say the man kept a hand in one pants pocket and pointed it forward. This is the latest in a series of drug-related robberies at area pharmacies, say police. Tune in to YCN News tomorrow as we report on the start of the Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Now Matt McDonald will have a look at our weather for the next five days and he'll take a look at some local high school sports. Thanks Rose. Tomorrow we're expecting sunny skies with highs in the 20s and a low of 3 degrees. Saturday we'll have highs around 26 and lows down to 12 degrees. Sunday we'll get more snow with highs in the upper 20s and a low of 9 degrees. Monday and Tuesday highs will be in the mid to low 20s with lows going down to negative 2 degrees on Tuesday. So dress warm when you go out. If you're in the Brattleboro area this weekend, check out the New England Youth Theater's production of Treasure Island. The show opens tomorrow and will be playing Fridays at 7 p.m. and weekends at 2 and 7 p.m. through February 16th. And now let's look at the Snow Country Report with Hallie O'Brien. Hey everybody, it's Hallie O'Brien here at Camelback, hanging out behind this camel's back. Camelback celebrating their 50th anniversary. Congratulations, by the way. First-timers definitely check out the terrain-based learning area here. They take the fear out by adding the fun in and shaping the snow in certain ways. It's a great time. And when you're done being an expert beginner, you can head over to the largest snow tubing park in the country. The groomed cruisers are in great shape, but this new snow gives the natural trails like chutes and glades a big boost. Ragged Mountain just recently opened nine new trails and the skiing and riding has been superb. They have quite a few glades and this fresh snow could get us some tree skiing at Ragged. Granite Gorge has a snowmobile hill climb under the lights Saturday night. Engines will be roaring. Hey, what day is it? Pump day! <laughs> Stop by the top of Margie's, take a picture at the frame for a photo op of the Camelback 50th anniversary. Hashtag frame memories. Good job, Chuck. I don't want to give you a big head, but you were great. All this deep new snow provides the best makeover for Suicide 6 in Vermont. Magic also needs that fresh powder to bring the excitement to their challenging, gnarly natural runs. This storm will help a lot. Stratton and Mount Snow check in with a foot of new snow. And you better believe the tree skiing and riding just got a whole lot better. Heading up for another run, but thanks for watching the snapshot. We'll see you next week. Let's look at some local high school sports games that are happening tomorrow. There will be a boys basketball game with Mascoma Valley facing Fall Mountain at Fall Mountain School starting at 6.30 p.m. In girls basketball, Newport will face Stevens High at the Frederick Carr Gymnasium at 7 p.m. Also, Fall Mountain will play Mascoma at 6.30 p.m. at the Mascoma High School Gym. Come out and watch these great upcoming games. <laughs> 